Warren Bob versus Uber Duriel, let's go. Yo, he melts! Yes! Okay, now it works! GG, let's go! Sayonara, Mr. Duriel! Uber Unique? Almost. But yeah, guys, Whirlwind Boom Boss Killer. Log in. Hey, everybody, it's Rob here. I just finished my first 30 hour stream here, and we are at the next day of the season. So it's like the beginning of day three right now. And uh, I want to show you my build, what I'm playing so far, and what I think of the season. So, right now, we have been grinding a lot. We've been doing a lot of uh, Uber boss runs. So, we have gotten quite a few items. I'm currently working on master working my new Harlequin's Crest uh, to the fullest rankings. And we are playing the Spin to Win Whirlwind Barbarian here. Right now, with a pole arm because I just got grandfather I'll load it later but the pole arm setup is very strong if you don't have the ubers yet as well obviously two rails might and harlequin's crest plus the starless guy uh, make this build really shine and it's really like the more the end game stuff where the barb really shines for speed farming but i've also played this all the way through with all uber uniques on the whirlwind barb and it still goes very well just use a pole arm choose the pole arm on your whirlwind and uh, basically spin and win so we are rocking harlequin's crest two rail smite we have conceded right now because we get barrier from our iron skin and uh, with the removal of several the, of the um, defense um, aspects here, so you usually have imposing presence, this doesn't exist anymore. So we are going with Iron Skin cooldown. And if you have a Shako, again, if you don't have a Shako, play Task Helm, it also gives you cooldown. The new Task Helm is actually pretty cool. So there's like a full planner for everything. We have this in the description. There's a no Uber version, there's a Uber version with a Polarm, and there's a starter version here with, with nothing. And then there's starter version here where you're playing Task Helm and the new Rage of Hourglass. And this setup is what I was playing very, very early on. And now I transitioned here fully into the pole arm Ubers because the grandfather was missing. I did find it, however. I just didn't roll it yet. I'll show this to you here real quick. So once you equip the grandfather in-game, in you will notice my tech power going with a massive spike. You see it like triples with the grandfather. But right now I can't play it yet. Uh, because I need to redo um, all my master working and all my tempering because I can't lose the size and size matters my friends but yeah this is as far as the grandfather goes but again the planners are going to be below and uh, we are rocking a lot of cooldown now with iron skin so the conceited aspect seems pretty strong because we can spam iron skin you see here with the harlequin's crash these skills only have seven seconds cooldown and uh, again we have the martial glyph reducing the cooldown even further uh, then we are rocking um, a maze here with chance of twisters and uh, 100 generation, 100 few generation spawns dust devils. We are rocking the new anger management and this one just basically allows you to have berserking permanently. Uh, then we are rocking fierce winds. This one gives you a bunch of uh, extra multiplier for the size and this is why the size matters. You want to have 100% size. I have 80 here. I get another 20 from this aspect, so that's a total of 100. And um, yeah, then we're rocking the polearm right now again. Choose Warwind polearm. I'm also playing Call of the Ancients because it gives you Fury, and they also buffed it to 25x. And it also gives you attack speed, and Warwind is scaling with attack speed now. So that is pretty cool. Then we have Bolts Chieftain, Starless Sky. If you don't have Starless Sky, you either play Vocalized or you play Starlight. And Starlight aspect has a very, very good synergy with the um, iron skin so you can see here the starlight basically gives you a primary resource when you heal and well you heal a lot with iron skin this is like your primary source of healing and then on the amulet i don't have crit chance right now i'm playing elements and these are my stats here so we're rocking 81 always once you have a turret smite you don't have to worry about all res. and before i was using an all rest roll on my pants and i was using an all rest roll on my um on my chest but uh, right now, we'd, and then obviously you play diamonds, and right now you basically just then take two out smite and you're gonna be fine. So there would be another role here that doesn't need to be all res. There's also a bit of a weird thing going on once you have two out smite, like all your jewels become useless because you don't need rest, you don't need armor. You get armor from Shako, and you get rest from two out smite later on. Um, so that's like a luxury problem. But again, uh, early on this doesn't happen, and you definitely want to have resistances on these kind of pieces so you see here like just pick the rest here and that's how it goes 
And then, yeah, skill tree, I, I think this is like nothing uh, too crazy, it's like pretty common skill tree. Uh, if you don't have Tyrael's Might yet and you're playing the Rage of Haraga setup, definitely uh, spec the point in Furious Whirlwind. And uh, the rest here is pretty standard, so we have shouts, we have all defensive stuff, this is how we get the bleeds. If we don't have a Furious Whirlwind, this is how we have the bleeds. And then we have Triple Shout, we have all the Shout support, we have the Berserking support, a Prolific here, so we generate more. Uh, slaying Strike, Pit Fighter, Counter Offensive. We don't need Cat to the Bone anymore. I tested Gushing Wounds and it's really only just a 1.7x, so you don't want to play Gushing Wounds. And Unconstrained is still a 60x multiplier, so you're still getting a 1.6 multiplicative damage here from Unconstrained. And then the Call of the Ancients and I have Heavy Handed here, so 1.3x as well. And uh, that's what we rock. Paragon, looks like this right now. We are rocking Exploit here in the starter board. Um, we are rocking Ira here. Then we have some life notes. I mean, you can skip this if you don't have all the Paragon points yet. Or you want to, like, get more Berserking and stuff. Then I recommend skipping this. Uh, you have Might. I don't play Carnage right now because Attack Speed is pretty nice. But it doesn't buff our uh, Whirlwinds because... Our, uh, our Dust Devils, because our Dust Devil has an ICD. This this one here, which is the big one, has a one uh, 0 0.75 second ICD. So having more attack speed for that isn't beneficial. However, you can whirlwind faster. And you can also trigger two rails might a bit faster with attack speed. So if you want to go Carnage, uh, you still can. However, I don't recommend it because there are better nodes to, to get. And you have to like spec quite out to get it. Um, then we have Blood Rage here, as always, 1.3, you want to look for that. Marshall, we have all the life nodes, so you see, it's a very tanky setup. We have Executioner here, because we have the whole arm. We have Wrath uh, for extra fury generation, especially helpfully against single target. Tenacity, and then we have the Twister Glyph, now finally working, not bugged anymore, 1.13x. And we have Brash right down here. So that's pretty much a setup. Um, in terms of elixirs, I'm not using anything to pre-buff. I'm mainly just using the crit chance elixir uh, to boost my crit chance. I have 61 right now. You can get a lot more if you have crit chance on the amulet, which I don't have right now. My amulet is still pretty decent though. Um, a bunch of cooldown. I really like it. So we have 10 seconds war cry. And I'm actually dropping my uh, anger management soon um, for uh, inner calm. Like later on, I will do this. Because you see, uh, 10 seconds if I master work my shako one more time. It's basically going to be an 8 second walk right cooldown and it's 7 second uptime. Uh, so you have a good way of keeping your berserking like that. And I'll show you a run right now. That's basically my gear. So overall I would say Whirlwind Barb is definitely still struggling against single target. You're going to be farming good with this build. I'm also going to do an Uber Duriel, I guess. Uh, I'm missing a few shards. Can we do something else? We could, we could kill like uh, some other boss, I guess. But yeah, let me do. Let me show you a pit run right now. I'm farming 85s, and uh, here we blast with the whirlwind bar. We just pit 85 right now, and we spin, and we sometimes win. Again, on the single target, you don't win so much, but a little bit. Uh, exclamation mark WW. I'm gonna put the build in the description again. The entire planner. So here we're using our shouts on cooldown. You see with uh, all the cooldown reduction that we get now, for example, from Harlequin's Quest or from Tusk Helm, whatever you play, helps a lot with the shouts. You're actually shout blasting. I was even thinking, man, maybe in the end I will try like a shout barb. Like just fully go on shout with the fierce whirlwind aspect and try how, how that's gonna go. But yeah, you're basically blitzing through this. Chop, chop, take the pylons. Protection is always decent. Checking the dead ends here. But just like normal, you just have to get a bit used to it because you're basically not bleeding the targets anymore, so you gotta stay on them roughly until they die. Usually you would just like bleed the elite and then you move on, so it takes a second to get uh, used to a slightly different playstyle basically. Okay, here's the new boss. Again, this is the worst boss that you can probably have. Like, this boss is really bad. 
I would almost uh, prefer the sharpshooter. Let me know in the comments what do you think. Is this boss or the sharpshooter? Which one was worse? I don't know, man. I'd probably take the sharpshooter over this one. Okay, here comes Lilith with some waves. Again, the uh, boss mechanics, they give you the stacks, so you definitely want to be dodging them. Like, uh, this new boss does a lot of damage, so you want to be careful there. We blasted them down right now. And uh, that's pretty much the whirlwind barb. Again, boss damage, still a little bit of a struggle, but uh, we're getting there. <laughs> All right, I'm going to show you some uh, Duriel boss footage. So we stay all the way up here and we wait a second. I don't think he's going to go down then. Come on, Doriel, don't go down. Ah, okay, it's close though. We get a little more damage, like I must have worked my gear. And we're going to kill him instantly. And that's with Whirlwind Bob, guys. And no grandfather right now. Uh, we are playing with Polearm. And yeah, it's uh, pretty smooth to kill Uber Doriel for sure. And uh, so can you do all the other bosses. However, in the pits and in general, you still lack a bit of single target damage. But again, almost all classes do that. Like, single target seems to always be the bottleneck. But the Whirlwind Bob is still one of the best farmers in the entire game. Um, again, Season 5, I had a lot of fun so far. And I th think uh, you guys did as well, at least most of you that were coming by the live stream. So thank you so much. And uh, we're also streaming on YouTube right now, so you can come say hello. I'm going to link the stream below as well. And we're going to continue playing Season 5. The Season theme is also really rewarding now, Infernal Hordes. You can get a lot of materials, you can get a lot of great graphics, you can get a lot of gold there. It's crazy for gold. I also have a video on that. Link that below. So log in, play, come say hello, and I'll see you soon. GG, spin to win. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe, leave a like or a comment. I'm also live on Twitch almost every day, so come and say hi.